Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Do you love Jesus? Yes. yes. There's about six here. Do you love Jesus? Yes. yes. Amen. We, we, um, we was managed to go to another church last week and um, there were two things I took away. One was a song which we'll introduce at some stage. And the other one was a question. Uh, when did church cease to become enough? When did church cease to become enough? And we used to invite people just to church, and now we invite them to everything. You know, we try to um, put a candy floss to the reality of church. But when did church stop becoming enough? So that's what when did church stop becoming enough? And there was a challenge in that for me, which I'm not going to talk about today, but I wanted to share with you why it's still in my mind. And if I forget it, then tell me, because I need to answer that question. When did church stop becoming enough? So um, I have got a word today, um, and it's more like an exhortation. Uh, and uh, I don't know how long it's going to be. I heard you had a, a really long speaker last week. Um, and uh, we, we, we were blessed with uh, all of this youthfulness of insight and understanding. And uh, so we want to thank Josh for that. Um, and uh, I can remember the first time I, I started preaching uh, many, many years ago now. And uh, people used to say, it's too long, it's too long. And I used to think, well, I've got so much to say. I've got so much to say. I need to tell all these people about what they don't know. <laughs> but of course, what I didn't realise was they already knew it. Uh, I just needed encouraging within it. And uh, so there's a journey to go on as we grow through our youthfulness and our insight and our understandings. And so we praise the Lord for the desire for young men like Josh who yeah. are wanting to Amen. share the reality of God's love in his life <laughs> and the things he's discovering. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So um, I'm reading from Romans 4, Abraham's justification by faith. And I'm reading not all the verses, uh, 13, um, 16, 17, 18, 19 to the end. So, so there's a bit I'm going to miss out. So don't think I'm missing them out. It's just that I didn't want to get bogged down in terms of too many um, words for you to understand at this time. But um, here we go. Verse 13. For the promise to Abraham or to his descendants, that he would be heir of the world, was not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, then faith is made void, and the promise is nullified. For the law brings about wrath, but where there is no law, there is no violation. 16. For this reason, it is by faith, in order that it may be in accordance with grace, so that the promise will be guaranteed to all the descendants, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of of many nations in the presence of him who he believed, that is, God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that do not exist in hope against hope. He believed so that he might become a father of many nations according to that which had been spoken. So shall your descendants be. Without becoming weak in faith, he contemplated his own body now as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully assured that what God had promised, he was able to perform. Therefore, it was also credited to him as righteousness. Now, not for the sake only was it written that it was credited to him, but for our sake also, to whom it will be credited to us, who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He who was delivered over because of our wrongdoings 
and was raised because of our justification. So there we are. That's the backdrop of the revelation of truth. And there are some precious, precious things in that, even though I know that the wording can sometimes be perceived to be complicated. There are some really wonderful truths in that that we need to take hold of to help us on our journey. Amen? Amen. Amen. Nice to welcome Phil and Katrina back yes. from their long holiday. So Thank praise you. the Lord for that. Okay. <laughs> So, Genesis 17, 4 says this, God promised to make Abraham the father of many nations. Now, the meaning of the word Abraham, which is his name before he was called Abraham, is the father is exalted. That was his name, Abraham, or something like that, as people used to say. Abraham's meaning, however, is the father of many nations. So he is known as the father of many nations in the name change that he entered into with God. And uh, Sarai, meaning his princess, and her meaning Sarah, changed as a result of her being in relationship to Abraham. Her name changed to mother of many nations. So they became those who were to establish a new order of things as it relates to a connection to God. And it was through the revelation of them trusting in the promises of God, which required faith. Now they didn't start off too well, but they grew in their journey along the way. So these two people, God chose to work through. When there was no hope in the natural, as far as Abraham and Sarah were concerned, Abraham went back to the promises of God to get himself some hope. Abraham knew how to go back to God and get himself some hope. And when hope is lost, it's all over. It's all over. And Abraham knew how to get hope. I ask you today, do you know where to get hope? I hope today, <laughs> forget the pun, I hope today that you will embrace the revelation of the thing that God gave us in giving Abraham what he gave him. God assisted Abraham in the changing of his name because he forced Abraham to make a constant declaration regarding who he was. Every time Abraham told people his name, he wasn't saying, my name is Abraham. He was saying, my name is Father of many nations. Father of many nations. And Abraham had a whole host of people around him. Servants that beckoned him all day long. People who looked after his enterprise. He was the Gordon Gecko of uh, the old ways. And he was constantly being called by a name. Abraham. But they was not calling him Abraham. They was calling him Father of Nations, Father of Nations, Father of Nations, Father of Nations. And they were calling him Father of Nations long before he ever had any children, any inheritance. Now he interrupted God a bit, but we won't get distracted by that. But eventually God gave him a son. And this journey began. Father of Nations' journey began. God got Abraham to do what he told Joshua to do constantly, day and night. He said this, Don't let this word depart from your mouth. 
Don't let this word depart from your mouth, but daily declare the revelation of the word. Now, faith comes through hearing the word. And every time they said father of nations, it reiterated in Abraham the revelation of the promise that God would make him the father of nations. And in this we see that Abraham is constantly manifesting, reiterating the promise that God had given to him. Faith comes through hearing the word. And speaking out the word is where you will be most effective. Abraham, in his constant revelation and insight of the truth that God had given to him, became fully persuaded and highly developed in his confidence in the things that God had said regarding who he was and what he would be. He convinced himself that what God had said was true. Now Jesus said in Mark that when I come back, when I come back, will I find faith in the earth? And faith in the earth amidst his children, in the revelation of the body, will he find faith active in the earth? And if Jesus was to come back to England now, I would question whether we are those who really understand what it means to live in faith, to live according to the revelation promises of God in the scriptures. There is so much uncertainty with the things that God has said in his word within our hearts, mixed with faith, mixed with unbelief, mixed with doubt, mixed with hope, that we are so full of mush because we have somehow diluted our ability to believe God. Now, we're all right as it relates to our salvation. Most of us have come to a place of conviction regarding that. And we're secure in the truth revelation that we believed in regarding the Saviour being Jesus and our hope of forgiveness at the judgment. Most of us are secure in that. But when it comes to other things regarding believing God, for great things, so many of us are so weak in our ability to believe God. And what has happened to our ability to believe God? And today's exhortation is to look at what Abraham did in regards to maintaining and keeping that which was precious to him. So, by God giving Abraham a new name, he gave him an opportunity to be constantly reminded and therefore convince himself that what God has said was true. For this reason, it is by faith with the grace God gives. Now, access to God came in two ways. Obedience to the law and all of its statutes, and trust in the promises of the gospel. Both of these require faith to benefit. Grace supplies our lack of faithfulness. One of the big problems was Israel was their inability to remain faithful. Now they wanted to remain faithful, but the nature of sin in us took the better of us. And Paul explains in Romans that it was because God was teaching Israel that they could never obtain what they needed to obtain in order to be able to enter in to a holy relationship with a heavenly God. And the byproduct of that was they was always falling short even if they run with him for a season. But God in Jesus gave us the ability to connect to him through a gospel that we did not deserve. And God has given to us the grace to be able to keep what Israel was not able to keep. Grace supplies us with what we don't have to do what we can't do, to be what we can't be, including exercising the gift of faith to trust God for things that we have long forgotten in regards to believing him for great things. The promise is a guarantee to all who would come, not only to those who come through keeping the law, but also to those who come 
as a result of receiving the gospel. God calls things into being that do not exist yet. God calls things into being that do not exist yet. In fact, creation was formed in this very way. The fact is that how God creates anything is he first says, he speaks. He first says it and then he does it. He says it and then he does it. And when God says it, it's a promise. And what God has said in his word recorded in the scriptures is for us to benefit from the revelation of the promises. But we cannot enter into any of those promises until we learn to exercise faith in those promises. And that's why most of us have had a lifetime of disappointments because we have fallen short of our ability to get rid of the much inside of us. Now there is a danger of thinking that somehow that kind of message is geared to condemn people, but it's not. But before we can understand where the problems are, we have to be truthful to ourselves and to God, and to recognise that there is a journey to go on with regards to how we get to believe the kind of gospel that Jesus left disciples that transformed the world and has got us to where we've got to now. We need to understand how to understand faith. And it starts by recognising that it exists in God's word through grace. So when God wants to create something, he says it. Abraham had hope when there was no hope to be had. Hope is the desire and the desired attribute. What do you want God to do for you? What do you want God to do for you? Abraham, he believed, he believed, to, and he had the conviction of knowing. The conviction of knowing without any doubt, to be fully persuaded, is to have no more yeah buts. No more yeah buts. All the yeah buts that question God's word to us is a problem to us as we seek to be those who exercise faith. But Abraham had no more yeah buts. To be highly developed is to have built up within yourself the knowing that what God has said is true and you are vacant of yeah buts. He became the father of nations to Israel but also to all who would come to God through faith, all who would believe in the promises. And it's the promises of God that we can rely on. Proverbs says, do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your pathways straight. Mm -hmm. Whose report will you believe? How long will you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? When will you start eating from the tree of life? Now, without becoming weak in his faith, how do you become weak in your faith? How do you become weak in your faith? Well, you listen to the circumstances and you turn away from the word of God. You get yourself distracted from the promises God has made to us and you let the circumstances manipulate you so that you no longer believe in the way that you need to believe in order to be able to enter in to the promises that God has made. Abraham, he contemplated in his own body as good as dead, since he was a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. When he looked at the natural, there was a mountain to climb. And it's looking at the circumstances that draw us away from faith. But somehow, we need to 
somehow develop the capability of believing and trusting in the God who has made the promises. Even though Abraham contemplated them, with respect to the promises from God, Abraham remained faithful. He never wavered. He continued to believe. He never wavered. Once he was fully convinced and highly developed, he never wavered. He held fast to the things that God has said. How did he not waver into unbelief? Now to waver is to question yourself and what he had been told by God. To allow the circumstances to dictate what he would focus on. To remove from him the conviction of knowing something was true. To place himself in, a question, in, a, in an uncertainty and a questioning. To give himself, as it were, a platform of insecurity. No, Abraham didn't waver. Instead, he grew strong in his faith. And how did he grow strong in his faith? Because he spoke out the promises. And what was the promise? The promise was this. The father of, father of nations, father of nations, father of nations. He learned to give glory for the promises. Now how do we divert the praise that people give us to God? We know who, the promise, who has made the promises. When God starts to use us in the specific things, which he will if we learn to exercise faith, we need to also learn how to divert that celebration of those victories away from ourselves onto God. Amen. We need to direct the adoration of everything that is done through us to God. If anyone is getting any praise, it's a problem to God. God wants all the glory because God is the author of all good things. Even if he uses us to do it, we are just celebrating the joy of being used. God wants to use you to impact the world, to love the world, to change the world, to affect your own lives in the world. And Abraham grew strong in his faith, giving God the glory, being fully assured. What does that mean, to be fully assured? Abraham, he was secure in what he knew. Brothers and sisters, have you come to a place where you are secure in the things that God has said in his word? Are you on secure ground, standing on secure ground? What is the righteousness of faith? It's not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith, says the Apostle Paul. He received the blessings of God, promised him, through the righteousness of faith. And the righteousness of faith is coming through to victory. It's coming through all of the doubts and the fears and the unbelief and the uncertainties. It's working your way towards the place of victory. Where you are fully convinced, where you're highly persuaded and fully convinced, where you know what you know what you know. He never changes. He's a God of yesterday and today. He never changes. Despite his and Sarah's body being old, he believed God's word. Though he contemplated his physical condition, he never allowed that physical condition to deter him from believing that what God said would happen. He never let himself waver from the truth of the things he believed. He never took his eyes off the promises of God. He did not waver. How did Abraham become so strong in his faith? How did he manage to win the battles of contemplation? How did he overcome the obvious natural enemies? What enabled him to continue to a place of belief where he was highly developed and fully persuaded, where he was living in the righteousness of faith? How did he do it? Because he kept on declaring it. He kept on declaring it. Father of nations, 
father of nations. He kept his trust in his God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The outward evidence would encourage Abraham to question God. But he staggered not. Because he decided to put his trust in God. He made the choice to believe God and not his physical condition. The laws of faith, the law of faith is speaking out what God has said. Faith comes through hearing the word. Despite the fact that the circumstances seem like you're speaking a lie. But how can you be speaking a lie when you're saying what God has said? How can you be speaking a lie when you're saying what God has said? Father of nations. He was speaking what God said. He is not saying things that were not true. So if he had turned around and said, I'm not old, I'm not old, I'm not old, I'm not old, well that would have been a lie. Because he was old. And it would be no point in saying that these symptoms are here, these symptoms are not here, these symptoms are not here, these symptoms are not, when they were there, because that would be a lie. But learning to declare the things that God has said is not so that you convince others, it's so that you convince yourself that you can become highly developed and fully persuaded. You don't need to go around telling others. You need to tell yourself. You need to be convinced yourself. It takes time to learn to grow in the exercising of your faith. But if you don't even start the journey, you'll never grow. Now, about two years ago, during COVID, I think it was, I had a, um, a spot on my face there. Uh, and every time I shave, I cut it off. And uh, then it would grow back. And, then, and it, was, it was uncomfortable, and it was growing. It was getting bigger. I think it was called a um, polyp. Is it a polyp? I think it was. I wonder what some little things are growing in the back. Skin tag. Skin Sorry. tag, that was what it was. Skin tag, thanks, Rob. It was a skin tank. And I began to pray. And I began to apply the principle that I've exercised to you today. And I began to tell this skin tank, you go, you've been told to go, leave. And I would say, you're not there. It was there. But I wasn't trying to tell anyone else it wasn't there. I was trying to live in the reality of the things that God has said from his word that I could ask for. He says, Mark 11, 23, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever says this mountain, skin tag, be taken off and cast the sea, does not down his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be granted to him. So my mountain was a skin tag. So I began to tell the skin tag, leave, leave, leave. And it was there, and it remained there, and it stayed there. One month, two months, three months. And I would tell it, every time I have a shave, I shave every day. Debbie likes a smooth man. <laughs> I shave every day. And I'd cut it off every day. And it would bleed every day. And I would command it to leave every day. Every day. And it was still there. One month, two months, three months, four. I can't even remember how many months it was. And then one day, I looked into the mirror. And I looked and I thought, that's got smaller. Thank you, Lord. And I was thanking him anyway that it was gone. That was my father of nations. Father of nations. Father of nations. Father of nations. I would tell it, father of nations every day. Father of nations. And then one day I woke up and I, and I shaved and I thought, that skin tag's gone. And I remember preaching the sermon on it during COVID. And I had a victory. And I thought, I'm off. The celebration has begun. I'm ready to take the world on now. I've lost my skin tag and I'm going to go for it. And I pressed in. And then I got myself a hernia. 
And I've had it three years or something like that. Maybe more. And, and it's painful when I stand up talking to you. And I've been asked, and I've been doing the same thing to the hernia as I've been doing to the skin tag. And it hasn't gone yet. And it's three years. And I'm still commanding this hernia to leave. And it hasn't gone yet. But I'm speaking and speaking to it. Father of nations. Father of nations. It takes time to get all of the unbelief out of us. It takes time to get all of the fear out of us. It takes time to get all the doubt out of us. It takes time. But brothers and sisters, it's worth it. It's worth it because if we make a breakthrough, and when we make a breakthrough, the journey that we go on to help the lives of the people around us who are looking for something to believe in that's worth their trust in. Because they're sick and they're dying. Spiritually, emotionally, physically, they're dying. But God is still the God who does the same things as He's always done. He still wants to make us Father of Nations, children of the Father of Nations. He still wants to make us the people of faith to release His power on the earth as it is in heaven. Now will you join me in my faith adventure? Will you believe God for something in your own life? A healing, a miracle, the salvation of a family member? Will you send and learn to send your faith off to work in a climate when faith is so weak in these days? Will you put your shoulder to the plough and push with me as we push together with God to reveal how great our God is in these days? Who wants to come and finish? Who wants to come and finish? To step out in faith, see? Who wants to come and finish? Would a lady like to come and stop and finish? Come, some, a lady come and finish in prayer. Praise her. Praise her. Father God, I just thank you for your word this morning. And I pray that all of us will move forward and trust in you and declare your promises in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.